Up to now, you've learned the most important control structures found in Alice. And in this video, you're going to begin to understand how to make your own custom procedural methods. Before we get started, let's take a look at what we'll be building today. The scene is the start of a tea party, and the Mad Hatter is greeting the guests. So let's take a look at what that will be. So it starts with the Mad Hatter, and the different characters come in one by one. They greet each other. And you'll notice that each one has a different greeting for the Mad Hatter. And so what we're going to do today is figure out the most efficient way to build this scene. I'm going to choose uh, Wonderland to get started, though the scene doesn't really matter. Click OK. And we'll wait for Alice to come back up. So as you saw, our goal is to build a scene where one uh, host greets the guest to a tea party. And it doesn't matter which characters you use, but the most important thing is they need to all be from the same class. So let me show you what that means. I'm going to click on the Setup Scene button. And down here are the different classes we've used so far. Biped classes, flyer classes. Uh, again, it doesn't matter which characters you choose, but they all have to be from the same class. So I'm just going to uh, choose the Mad Hatter to be my host. So I'm going to scroll down in the, one, in the biped class, choose Mad Hatter, click OK. And they're going to be sort of the center of the screen. And I'm going to turn the Mad Hatter to kind of face this side. I'm going to want my party guest to enter from the left. And then I'm going to pick three other biped characters. Um, let's start with Alice, since this is her land after all. I'll click OK. I'm going to move her. Oh, whoops. It's rotating. Let me move Alice over to the side. And then I'm going to turn Alice to, to face the general direction of the Mad Hatter. So that's pretty good there. Uh, let's go back to the biped classes. I'm going to add a Cheshire Cat. Put the Cheshire Cat right about here. I'll use the regular Cheshire Cat. I'm going to turn it this way a little bit. Again, so he's facing the general direction of the Mad Hatter. Maybe move it a little bit closer to, whoops, a little bit closer to Alice. And then the last thing I'll add is a playing card. You scroll down, there's the playing card. And I'll drag the playing card in, maybe over here. And again, it doesn't matter which one we pick. I'll pick this one. And then I'll turn it to face the Mad Hatter. Now, since we want the characters each to enter and then greet the Mad Hatter individually, we want them to start off the screen. So I'm going to use the one shots to move each character back about 10 meters. So I'll go to one shots, procedures, move, backward, 10. And you can see the playing card went off the screen. Let's do the same thing for Alice. Move, backward, 10. And finally, the Cheshire Cat. Move, backward, 10. OK, that's it for the setup. Let's go to Edit Code and get started. All right, we are going to start working with the Mad Hatter. So I'm going to choose the Mad Hatter from the object list and just click on Mad Hatter so that it's selected. Now I'm going to add a custom procedure to the Mad Hatter. So up here in this uh, hexagon menu, I'll click on Mad Hatter, Add Mad Hatter Procedure. So this is a procedure that only the Mad Hatter can do. And I'm going to call this, um, how about greeting? since the Mad Hatter is going to be greeting the guests. Okay, And again, notice I used a capital G. Normally when um, computer scientists are writing custom procedures or methods, they use a capital letter to start it. Now let's start to program our greeting. We're going to have the Mad Hatter say, welcome to the tea party. So I'm going to start with say. I'm going to do a custom text string. I'm going to say, welcome to the tea party, exclamation point, because he really means it. And then to make it look more realistic, we're going to have the Mad Hatter's mouth move up and down. So I'm going to, first of all, from this menu, choose get mouth. 
and I want to turn the mouth forward 0.125 and I want to turn it backward 0.125. And let's put all this in a do together block so that the mouth is moving while the Mad Hatter is saying welcome to the tea party. And if you remember from previous videos, if I ran it like this, the mouth wouldn't, wouldn't move because I'm asking it to turn backward and forward at the same time. So in order to get that effect, I'm going to put a do and order block inside and then drop the mouth moving uh, blocks in here. And one final thing, each of these takes one second. So I'm going to make the duration of the Mad Hatter saying welcome to the tea party to be two seconds, so it's there the whole time the Mad Hatter's mouth is moving. Okay, so we have done that. Let's go ahead and test our new custom procedure. I'm gonna go back to my first method, and we're gonna have the characters all walk in and have the Mad Hatter greet them. So I notice that I'm still on the Mad Hatter object, and again, I want each character to move 10 meters forward and greet the Mad Hatter. So I could change each character, but then what if I wanted to use the Mad Hatter's greeting, I'd always have to come back to this. So we're gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna drag the this Mad Hatter move, even though I want Alice to move first, I'm gonna have it move forward, 10, and then all I have to do is change this drop down to Alice. So once Alice moves forward, I want then to have the Mad Hatter greet her. And then I'm going to have the Cheshire Cat move forward, Again, I'll drag the Mad Hatter block in, forward, 10, and then I'll just change this to Cheshire Cat, and then have the Mad Hatter greet the Cheshire Cat. Finally, I'll have the card come in, so I'll move forward, 10, and just change this to the playing card, and have the Mad Hatter greet the playing card. Okay, well, let's uh, first save our project, so file and then save, and we'll call it a Tea Party Greeting. Now let's run this to see what it looks like. So I'll click Run, and you can see Alice comes in, and the Mad Hatter says, Welcome to the Tea Party. And now everybody has come in, and we have a the Mad Hatter greeting them. Of course, it's kind of rude for the, the guests to not greet the Mad Hatter back. So let's go ahead and have the guests say, hello, Mad Hatter. So one way to do that is to create a custom procedure for each one of the guests, but that sounds like a lot of repetition. So what we can do, since they're all bipeds, we can create a biped procedure and have them all use the same one, which is a lot more efficient. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a custom biped procedure. So let's go up to this menu here, and I'm going to choose biped and add a biped procedure. And we'll call it salutations, which is a fancy word for greetings. And notice now we're in the biped menu. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did for the Mad Hatter. We're going to have the biped say, a custom text string, they're all going to say, hello, Mad Hatter. Okay. And we're going to have the mouth move the same way, so we're going to click on this menu, choose the arrow, and do get mouth. We're going to have the mouth turn forward, 0.125, and have the mouth turn backward, 0.125. I'll drag the two to get the do together block in and add each of the commands. And then finally, we'll add a do in order and add the mouth movements in there. So this is almost identical to what the Mad Hatter method was. So let's see if we can use that. So we're going to go back to my, oops, one thing I forgot to do before I do that is change the duration of this to two seconds so that the uh, say bubble lasts. Now we can go back to my first method and um, add this salutation to our method. 
So again, let's pick one character. Let's call it Alice. And you'll notice that now I have an additional custom procedure here on Alice, which is the salutations. So I'll just drag this in right under the greeting so it looks like Alice is replying. I could change to the Cheshire Cat and see the Cheshire Cat also has the same salutations uh, procedure because the Cheshire Cat is also a biped. And I can drag it in. And for the playing card, I could switch to the playing card, but I'm just going to drag the Cheshire Cat greeting in and just change it to playing card. Because all of them are bipeds, they all have access to this procedure. So now let's take a look at this and see there's the Mad Hatter saying, and Alice replies. And the Cheshire Cat comes in, and the Cheshire Cat replies. So this is starting to look a lot more realistic. So let's close this. And this is starting to get a little bit long. There's a lot of repetition in here. So we are going to actually make a custom scene procedure and put all of this code into that um, to make my first method a little bit more streamlined. So I'll go to this menu, go to scene, and then do add scene procedure. And I'm going to call this party greetings. And again, notice the capital letters. And what I'm essentially going to do is I want to copy all these statements into my party greetings procedure. So one of the best ways to do it is I'll just drag each of these statements to the clipboard. And I'll do it one by one. And you can see the clipboard shows me the number of statements that they have. Let's go ahead and keep dragging. So only take a second. Whoops, I missed that one. And what we'll do when we go to the party greetings is we will then copy them back into there. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit so it takes a little bit uh, faster. So now we've moved all of these statements into the party greetings procedure. And my first method is empty. But if you'll notice, if I'm at the top level of my object menu, if I go to this, which is the scene, I have a party greetings procedure that I can drag in. And just to test it, that should have the same effect as before. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see it looks exactly the same as it did before. Now, the one last problem is that all the guests reply in exactly the same way, which is kind of boring. So we're going to add what's called a parameter uh, so that the guests can say different things. So we're going to close this. We're going to go back to the salutation. And we are going to click on the Add a Parameter button. And again, you're going to see a warning that you're already using this three times. That's OK. We're going to make the type of it a text string since it's their it's text because they're talking and we'll call it what to say I'll check this box to make sure I understand and I'll click OK and in order to use this parameter where it says say instead of saying hello Mad Hatter I'm going to change this to what to say so now I've, now I can customize what each uh, guest of the tease party says. So let's go fix that now. Let's go back to our party greetings and notice that this Alice has this red unset for what to say. So I can click here. I'll use a custom text string and I'll say, Hi, Mad Hatter. Click OK. The Cheshire Cat can say, Howdy. Mad Hatter. And the playing card can say, Sup, Hat Man, because the card is cool like that. 
So now, we've, by adding the parameter, we have customized what each of these is going to say. So let's go ahead and save it by hitting Control S and run our program. Notice now Alice says her custom Hi Mad Hatter. Cheshire Cat says howdy. And the playing card says sup hat man. So by adding these custom procedures, we have kind of streamlined what our my first method has looked like. We have shortened the code by adding a method that all uh, bipeds can use. And we have customized the different greetings that our characters can say. So these custom procedures can be very powerful tools. In our last video in this series, we're going to take a look at uh, events and event listeners.